All right, I'm here in uh, Bradenton with the Marauders, uh, Jared Oliva, and assistant coach uh, Adam Godwin, and we're just going to chat a little bit about uh, about baseball. Uh, Jared, so tell me a little bit about uh, your story. I read a little bit online on minor league baseball that there was no buzz about you coming out of high school, and you kind of did a showcase, and then your world kind of you know got flipped upside down. So tell me a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. So it's a little different than most, I guess, pro baseball players, yellow Division One uh, college players. Uh, didn't play much in high school. Uh, junior year, I think I had like 10, 11 at bats. Uh, senior year, I think I played half my senior year. Uh, definitely a little bit different story. You know, talented team. Was not the same player as I was today. No, uh, but you know, still worked hard. Still had all the good makeup. You know, did well in school. Um, to keep things a little shorter, uh, went to a camp at University of Arizona. Uh, talked to the coaches leading up to it. Went there after a day, typical showcase kind of stuff, you know, hit through, you know, ran 60. Mm -hmm. uh, got to interact with the coach that I contacted with, Sean Cole, and uh, he basically pulled me aside, just wanted to know more about what was going on with the high school, you know, recruiting process. Uh, told him what was going on, said, hey, you know, I'm not really getting looks. Um, you know, there's no money being mm -hmm. talked or anything yeah. like that. Um, so he called my high school coach back. He talked to him previously, um, just to make sure he had the right guy. Um, <laughs> And, you know, he basically just said, hey, you know, I talked to Coach Lopez, you know, we really want you here in the program next year. Uh, let us know if anything changes with the mm -hmm. recruiting process, you know, other schools come into play. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'd, you know, love to have you. You know, we think you can impact this program, you know, as a player and as a person. And, you know, that, that was all I wanted to hear. I was on cloud nine after that. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously nothing was guaranteed. Um, so I went there, you know, as a walk-on and showed up with 55 other dudes uh, to make a 35-man roster. So I had to perform, you know, got in there early in the summer to the mm -hmm. weight room. Uh, really excelled physically and kept kept the grades up when the business school did all that uh, did the stuff off the field community work um, But ended up making the team and you know finishing my career at Arizona So it was very very fortunate. Yeah, to keep yeah. it all concise But you know very lucky it all played out that way and that uh, Sean Cole took a chance on me. You know, yep. It would have been pretty easy just kind of overlook somebody like that, but mm -hmm. uh, so I uh, and Forever indebted to him. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. Uh, give me the opportunity. That's awesome. So Adam, tell me a little bit about your ride uh, to your position now with the uh, with the Marauders. Yeah, mine started kind of crazy too, a little different. Um, coming up through high school, I was a big basketball player. Uh -huh. wasn't really even a baseball player. I had played in little league and stuff like that, but didn't really have the dreams and aspirations uh, of playing in the big leagues or anything like that. And it so happened my senior year, um, a guy got hurt on the baseball team, and they came to me. Our coaches did, and they said, "Hey, you know, guy, could you come out and fill in for?" At that time, high school was not many games, but they were like two weeks. It's like seven games. So I was like, sure. And uh, lo and behold, a junior college uh, coach was coming to scout one of my best friends one of those games. And he ended up seeing me. Mm -hmm. And I think he just, you know, he liked the run factor, the run tool, and that was really all I could do. Um, I may have laid down a bun or stole a base or something. And then I remember then that night he called my, my house line and my parents and I, and he was like, you're not going to believe this, but he was like, oh. You should think about playing baseball in college instead of basketball. He said, uh, "How many six-foot white dudes are in the NBA?" <laughs> and it kind of made me stop and think. I was like, "You're kind of right." Uh, Steve Nash was like the only mm -hmm. one, and so then he was like, "I'm going to offer you a scholarship, and I want you to think about it." And so I did. I sat down with my family, and then kind of changed, switched sports overnight. And once I made that commitment, um, you know how I was raised. I just attacked it head on, and it started at junior college, and then ended up signing at Troy University in Alabama and then from there uh, got drafted by the Dodgers and then went on to play 10 years professional baseball and then have spent the last four now coaching with the Pirates. That's awesome. That's so, an amazing journey. That's an ama amazing crazy. ride. You never know. So you're a speed guy. Jared, you're a speed guy too. Uh, you're leading the league in stolen bases. you got 29 stolen bases? I believe correct? so, yeah. Uh, so, so tell me a little bit for amateur baseball players, tell me a little bit about the mindset when it comes to you as a base runner. Mm -hmm. um, what you're thinking about when you're, you know, what's the ideal pitch count uh, that you're going to steal on, situation, things like that. Yeah, so a big thing we, we've been working on this year is taking risks. Mm -hmm. That's been the biggest thing. I try to play a little too safe leading up to it, you know, high school, even college career, uh, making sure, like, you know, if I'm stealing, like, the guy's got to have a high leg kick, the catcher's got to, you know, be slow, just whatever it might be. So I didn't really take that many opportunities. But once we got in the pro ball, I remember Gotti pulled me over instructs, and we talked about the whole risk factor and realizing I have, you know, that game-changing speed that, you know, it could – help win ball games. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting all the pressure on the defense though. No pressure should really be on me. The pitcher has to make a good pitch. Mm -hmm. Catcher has to make a good throw. There's a lot of moving factors involved. Right. Um, obviously the counts is a big part too. Um, looking for breaking ball counts. 
knowing O2, if they're going to go high fastball, that, that's a good pitch for him to maybe throw me out. Mm -hmm. So it's stuff we've learned, you know, as, as the year gone on. Um, but really, any opportunity I, I get to try to go, I'm trying to steal. Right, yeah. One, you know, to try to stretch my limits, as you know, was the big thing this year, leaning into it, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, hitting defense, you know, running, uh, was stretch my limits. So every time I get on, I'm looking to go. If the guy's got a quick, you know, slide step, you know, I might tip my cap, but I'm still looking maybe delay steal now. Yeah. You know, so there's yeah. always there's always some way I could, you know, help play factor on the bases. Yeah. Sometimes I might not be stealing, but it's getting good read on, you know, right. base hit. Taking that extra Yeah, base. yeah, so there, there's always something, you know, I'm looking forward to take that extra 90, um, take that, that risk, as we call it. So. so that speed seems to translate into the outfield for you. You've gone two Translates years everywhere. Now. Outfield, hitting, it goes everywhere. Yeah, but. two years now, over 300 chances, you only got one error. So tell me a little bit about your play in the outfield. Um, are you moving based on the count? Are you moving based on the, on the, the hitter that's at bat situation? Tell me a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely both. Yeah, that's another thing. I mean, everything relates back to God. You know, it's stuff we've worked on in truck spring training because we knew we we're going to be together during the season. Um, so this year, you know, I had the running ability. But I was kind of getting away with it, you know, maybe not playing the hitters exactly how I should be. Mm -hmm. but I was able to still run balls down and make up for it. But now this year, going over scouting reports, now having a better idea of where to mm -hmm. play guys. Maybe, you know, now I, I could stretch my limbs even more on the balls that are on the opposite side of the gap that I'm still able to get to right. before they're, you know, base right. hits. Um, so it, it's knowing the count to uh, moving for every pitch, having something, you know, go on so I'm not flat-footed out there is a big right. thing. Um, but other than that, you know, we try to get a good idea leading into the game, and after that, just try to have fun, play, relay, always talking to other, you know, corner outfielders mm -hmm. or, you know, wherever I'm at in the, in the outfield. Um, Really, just try to get on the same page with yeah. everybody. And then after that, it's just play. It's for sure. Time, so. For sure. So, Adam, tell me a little bit about um, Jared's journey from last year, no home runs. Mm -hmm. Now this year, he's got nine home runs, batting 281. Kind of turned it on a little bit. Is there something that kind of transformed early in the year, or something that you guys kind of harped on to make that adjustment? Well, as far as the hidden side of it goes, um, I think we just want Jared's natural ability to play out and not. Jared sometimes, and I think he would agree as he sits here, sometimes could overanalyze and mm -hmm. over kind of try to overdo things mechanically, mentally, whatever that may be. And for us, uh, you know, a lot of credit to Butch Weiniger. He's uh, the hitting coach here, and I kind of help him on the side. But just to free Jared up, free nat his natural ability, his athleticism uh, in the box, and whether that's uh, hitting or defensively or on the bases. Mm -hmm. um, like he just talked about sometimes, uh, Jared's biggest obstacle at times could be playing with that governor. You know, he plays with the safety governor. And, and here at this level, and to be an elite player, it's, it's learning how to play without that and learn how to use that when you need to. Uh, where he came in, kind of using that from the get-go, uh, which you understand with a college guy that's right. minimal games, don't want to make mistakes, you're trying to get on the field and play. Well, here you get plenty of opportunities, and every opportunity we're going to learn from, but let it all fly, let it all hang, let your ability go. And that's what he's done. He's done a good job of making some adjustments, and um, it's playing out for him as he's having a great year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for young amateur hitters, um, what is something that they should be working on in, in a sense of, I don't want to just hit for power, I don't want to just hit you know, opposite field or whatever. What is something they should hone in on, whether it be mechanically, fundamentally, or approach-wise? I would say the, uh, the top thing for myself, and I can't speak for Butch. Butch would be a, a better candidate in here to kind of lead this direction. Um, of hitting, but for me it's knowing thyself, know what kind of hitter you are, knowing what ex the expectations are of you. If you're the leadoff hitter, what's your role, what's your job, spray the ball to get on base for the three, four, or five guys coming behind you. Um, you know, are you a guy that's really back control oriented, got to use the bunt game, or am mm -hmm. I that guy that drives the runs in? And so to young hitters I would say, and, and let me tell you this, power is the last thing to come. And we tell, these guys hear this all the time. Some of our major league hitters, you look at Josh Bell that had 12 home runs you know, a couple years ago in, triple, in Indy in AAA, and then he goes to big league level and has 26 his first year. You know, mm -hmm. So reiterating that power is the last thing to come. And I know that uh, that's the nice, that's what showcase ball can be about sometimes, getting out there and whacking it out of the park, and I understand that. But the huge element is, is being able to show up and, and do your job. Yeah. You know, And number one, what is my job? What kind of hitter? what type of hitter am I, and sticking to that and selling out to it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Jared, last question. Um, tell me, what is the toughest part about the daily grind as a minor league baseball player? Good question. Toughest part, yeah, it's, it's definitely a great question. Um, you know, it's something 
I've always had a good plan going into each day. Um, so everyone harps on, you know, it's a long season, it's a marathon, you know, it's grind, you know, everyone talks about the same way. Um, but how I combat that is, you know, the night before, after, you know, I wash off the game, good or bad, wherever it may be, I can take notes from that game and mm -hmm. take away the positives, whatever it might be, or just learning experiences. And I try to get myself a good plan leading into the next day. So it's awesome. something it's something to keep my mind stimulated mm -hmm. so it's not just monotonous every right. day going to the ballpark, mindlessly taking reps or whatever it might be. I have a plan for every everything I do and that's when things are going well. I'll say, try to catch yeah. myself maybe some days I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, I need reset. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, right on sticky note, I put it on my wallet every day and it's something, you know, I'll have notes for the game, whether it be base running, defense, whatever, whatever it is from the night before, maybe just something I want to continue to work on. So that way, when I go to the cage, it's with a purpose. You know, if I go into BP, I'm working on something. I'm not just, you know, oh, it's just hit. Yeah. And then for the next hour, you're just taking mindless reps. Right. And you're not really, whether it be pitch selection, zoning, you know, whatever, right. whatever it might be. There's many different categories you can mm -hmm. break off into. But it's making sure I have a plan each day. And if I could execute that plan, then leading into the game, I shouldn't really have any worries. Awesome. You know, that, that way you can just go play. But I have to talk about, you know, I obviously try to overanalyze some things. You know, it'll show up. That's yeah. how quick I could reset and just get back to the process yeah. about things. And that comes with having a passion for the game, though, too. You want to perform yeah. well. You want to do well. Yeah. You, know, you have ambitions and what, things like that. So. What, what we talk about is a lot. You know, coaches are here. They can help us, you know, but they can't motivate us. Right. Mo motivation has to right. come with, you know, from within. Um, so the guys who have that drive and stuff want to get better. You know, it should be fun. Yeah, it's tough. You know, physically some days, yeah. you know, might not, you know, feel the same. Bat speed may be a little slow that day. Um, but if you got that plan going into the day, then you know, at least you're doing something right, trying to get better, and it's not just a day wasted. Yeah. So. Jared, Adam, thanks so much. I appreciate your thoughts, and uh, thanks for taking your time today. Absolutely. No thanks problem. for having us. Awesome. Appreciate it.